Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look and see what's contained within the second five words, the words 6 through 10 of subframe 3. And yes, indeed, here are the missing 24 bits. We saw the first eight MSBs in, uh, I believe it was word 5, and here in word 6 we have the 24 LSBs of I sub naught, which is the inclination angle at the reference time, so the angle of inclination of the satellite at a particular moment in time. Then we have some additional variables. We have the CAC. Uh, no, no, that's not the CAC, that's the CRC. There we go, the CRC. And that is what we call the amplitude of the cosine harmonic term to the orbit radius. So again, because the, or the orbits have some eccentricity, therefore they're not perfect circles, so the radius is going to vary. And we have, a, of course, a, a sinusoidal or a cosinusoidal wave that can describe the change in the orbit radius as it goes around, of course, the orbit, the orbit radius gets bigger and smaller. And so we have the amplitude of that cosine harmonic term to the orbit radius, and that's contained in those 16 bits in word 7. In, in word 7 and word 8, we have a total of 32 bits. Again, we need a lot of, a lot of bits there to contain the argument of the perigee. So perigee is the position of the satellite when it's closest to the Earth, and though therefore uh, we want to know what the argument of that perigee is, where exactly that is located. Then we have the rate of right ascension, and we have the I dot, which is the rate of inclination angle. Remember, in astronomy we can identify any object by showing its angle of inclination and by knowing the right ascension. So here for the satellite, we want to know the rate at which the right ascension is changing and the rate at which the inclination angle is changing. And that's contained within the omega dot and the I dot. And now we still have an IODE, which is the issue of data of the ephemeris. Again, to, to make sure that we're dealing with the right set of ephemeris data, we want to make sure we check that out. And we're going to compare that to some contents that were in War II and that we covered in an earlier video. So that's all the information you have in War II and War III. So uh, I'm sorry, in subframe two and subframe three, all of that contains the ephemeris data. When you have all this data, you can then calculate the exact position of the satellite at any point in time, as long as we make sure that the GPS time and the SV time are lined up and we know the exact delta between the two, then using these parameters, we can find the exact location of the, of the satellite through the ephemeris data that's sent to us from each satellite, total every 30 seconds. So notice we have the five subframes. These are sent, uh, they take six seconds each. So for a period of 12 seconds every 30 seconds, we receive the ephemeris data from each satellite. And that is how we can find the satellite, lock onto it, and track it, knowing exactly where it is. And then based upon the information of the satellites, we can know exactly where we are on the surface of the Earth. Pretty amazing that they can do that. And of course, it takes these parameters in words two and three to accomplish that. And that is how it's done.